These past 18 months have definitely been trying on our medical community. The words pandemic, masks, surges, social distancing, and variants have become common in our everyday conversations. However, the words bravery, resiliency, toughness, perseverance, and resolve are the words that I think of when I think of Ridgeview, our providers, and our staff, and how we all came together to take on this monumental challenge. We truly do have the best people here at Ridgeview. The pandemic brought and continues to bring uncertainty and change, but arguably the most positive outcome through it all is the way our medical community responded and continues to respond in such a quick manner. And although I think we already knew it, a worldwide pandemic has reiterated the importance of high quality healthcare close to home. That's why in 2022, Ridgeview is focusing even more on providing a higher level of care to residents in the Southwest Metro. First of all, I'd like to thank John Hayes and Inky Brewing for being willing to host our event today. And while I wish we could be gathered at Inky Brewing tonight, we thought it would be best if we held off on a large gathering as a safety precaution until the Delta variant is more controlled. The good news is philanthropy at Ridgeview continues to be strong. It was you, our closest friends, community members, partners and providers that helped us recover from the financial hit we took due to COVID. And it is your generosity that helps provide the state-of-the-art tools and equipment that make our healthcare system great. I'm joined today by Vice President of Medical Affairs, Dr. Matt Harold, and Chief Nursing Officer, Elaine Arian, to discuss Ridgeview achievements and what lies ahead for the upcoming year. Let's start with Elaine. Elaine, tell us a little bit about the roller coaster ride your teams have been on for the past 18 months. Thanks, Mike. It has been a roller coaster ride. Um, over the last 18 months, we've dealt with numerous changes uh, in regulations and recommendations, each of those requiring us to very quickly respond and to educate our staff to ensure that they could care for our patients safely. You add all of that with what was going on in their personal lives, kids now online learning, um, family members working remotely. It's been a huge stressor, but truly what has gotten us through all of this is the outpouring of appreciation from our community and the community's support. We truly felt that. Now let's go to you, Dr. Harold. Are the current COVID vaccines safe? They are safe, Mike. I think there's a couple important things to note here. When I got my first dose of vaccine in December 2020, I would have had to say they were probably safe. We had a small but adequate data set that showed safety, but there are a couple of important things that we've now seen. First off, we've had a large number of doses, a million, three million, 100 million. Now we've hit over 375 million doses in the US and we're not seeing significant increases in serious side effects. That's really important. Most vaccines historically, if serious side effects are going to occur, it will occur within about six weeks. And we haven't seen those increases over time. The second thing that's exciting, and this is a little bit nerdy here, but we have our first large data set from non-government sources that shows safety of the vaccine. And that was published in the New England Journal of Medicine last month. What that looked at was about 800,000 people who got the vaccine and a similar group of 800,000 people who didn't get the vaccine. And they examined side effects, even serious ones. They did see an increase in side effects in the people who got vaccine, but they did not see a significant increase in serious side effects. Even if they saw a trend of more serious side effects, those risks were far less in the people who actually got COVID. So if we look at the risk of getting a vaccine versus the risk of getting COVID, I think it's safe to say that these vaccines are safe. One of the questions I often get are, how is COVID still impacting our operations day to day? And, and my answer to that is, uh, it, it's definitely changed since the start of the pandemic. We have integrated a number of our protocols and our safety, uh, safety events into our operations. And now uh, dealing with COVID is a day to day occurrence. However, the impact has definitely stressed uh, the system across the state uh, in general, and all you have to do is read uh, the headlines of the paper to understand that. Um, and of course, there, you know, there have been labor shortages across the industry. So uh, we are dealing with some things, but uh, some things have become commonplace 
in terms of how we operate as an organization. So there are some things uh, that we have uh, found easier to deal with uh, and certainly still remaining challenging. In addition to managing COVID, what other milestones was the organization able to achieve this year? Elaine, let's maybe go to you. Sure. It's been an exciting year. So this year we introduced our nurse residency program. It's a very important aspect of recruiting and retaining young nurses. These are new graduate nurses coming out of school that really need the next level of support. We do know statistically the highest turnover rate is in that first year for the new graduate. So very excited to have that. We also brought in for the first time in Ridgeview's history a clinical nurse specialist. Um, her expertise will really uh, catapult our clinical teams forward. Her specialty really will help us with developing higher acuity care here. Uh, in particular, she will work on clinical competency, so that involves our training and education, so very excited to have that. We'll also have a professional development council that's starting up in 2022, uh, so a lot has been being done um, in the midst of the pandemic that is very optimistic for Ridgeview's future. Okay, thank you, Elaine. Dr. Harold, what resonates for you in terms of accomplishments over the past year? Well, I'm biased a little bit, but I'll have to speak to the opening of the Norman and Ann Hoffman Emergency Center. We're approaching our first year of operations. We've seen a tremendous increase in, in patient volumes through our new emergency department and it's just a gorgeous facility. You've heard me talk about it before, but this is changing how we take care of our patients in our local market. And um, it's been really exciting to see that um, change over the last year. One of the other things that goes along with that emergency department redesign is our geriatric emergency department certification. This is a certification that comes from the American College of Emergency Physicians. And Ridgeview is the first in Minnesota to achieve the certification for our emergency department. This was developed by a team of people, doctors, nurses, and support staff that help us develop programs for multidisciplinary care for our seniors within the emergency department. This is gonna be critical as we move forward to get seniors the care that they need, not only when they're with us in the emergency department or in our hospital, but when they're back in the community. The other thing that we've done that I think was very exciting was in response to the pandemic. We very rapidly coordinated an effort to get more than 50,000 vaccine doses out to our community members. That was a huge undertaking of all sorts of people who are already occupied with their full-time jobs and regular duties, and we managed to get that up and running in partnership with Carver County Public Health. That was a great accomplishment. Thank you, Matt. Uh, one other question I had for you is, how have Ridgeview's patient population or market changed in the last period of time and, and what, uh, what does that mean to Ridgeview services and how we accommodate those needs of those patients? Well, we've basically seen more of everything. Uh, as I mentioned, we've seen an expansion of our senior uh, population in our service area. And we've also seen a lot of growth in senior living in our communities. And so um, that's been what's happening over the last few years and we've already started to respond to that. Now what we're experiencing is a significant housing boom and we have a lot of young families moving to our service area. So we really need to consider how can we provide the most comprehensive care across the age spectrum from birth all the way through end of life. Many of our senior patients, for example, have inherently more complex medical histories and needs. We need to support our patients within our own health systems with enhanced hospital-based, procedural, and specialty care close to home. We also need to help our patients navigate an increasingly complex healthcare system with care coordination support so they can get the care that they need where they need it at the right time. Thank you, Matt. So it seems to me that with a growing market and a population and a need to keep patients and seniors in our community and in our hospital, that we're gonna to have to grow our ability to take care of people from an acuity standpoint. So Elaine, what does increasing acuity mean to you? Hmm. Uh, it's a good question, Mike. Uh, I know that Ridgeview is dedicated to delivering high quality care close to home. So acuity for us is providing services to this community such as our neonatal unit. We're planning on dropping that gestational age to 30 weeks so we can better serve the growing population. 
that allows our obstetricians to deliver down to 30 weeks, again, keeping families close to home. And we have perina perinatology support here, so it's just a, a wonderful um, service that we can provide. We're also working very hard on pediatrics and what does our next level of pediatrics look like here um, at Ridgeview in this community. We're also many other programs that we've been evaluating. For example, neurology, expanding those services, spine program, orthopedic program. So we are making a lot of headway and a lot of exciting work is happening. Thank you, Elaine, that was very helpful. Dr. Harold, how does an organization like Ridgeview keep a connection to other specialists in the market that help us keep patients closer to home? Well, there's a lot of interesting ways to approach that, Mike. With the institution of EPIC, our new electronic health record, we do have opportunities to collaborate across our enterprise and beyond. We're building a comprehensive telemedicine infrastructure, which means I can engage with providers both at one of our other hospital sites, for example, or in a, a different hospital system entirely, and get assistance and consultation and specialty care sometimes that we couldn't provide locally uh, via a video teleconference. Thank you, Dr. Harold. So it seems that if we're going to increase acuity across our organization and be able to say we're going to take care of sicker patients in our, at Ridgeview, Elaine, let me ask you, how would you prepare staff to be able to accomplish that? Thanks to the generosity of our donors and the foundation, we've been able to bring in certain equipment. For example, high definition simulation mannequins, which really allow us to do procedures, to practice mock codes, to do intensive type of clinical skills on this mannequin and provides us real time feedback on our skills. So it's a, it's a wonderful opportunity. So as Elaine has mentioned, we are working on elevating staff competencies. As Dr. Harold has mentioned, we're growing programs to be able to keep patients closer to home. What that means to our friends and family at the foundation is that philanthropy has never been more important. These things don't happen without you and the things that you can bring to be able to help us with the significant capital and operating expenses necessary to keep people closer to home. I'd like to thank Dr. Harold and Elaine for joining me today to talk about Ridgeview's strategies around increasing acuity. Obviously, a lot of this doesn't happen without your support. Whether it's helping us acquire the tools and technology to keep people closer to home or to help develop staff skills necessary to operate and to serve patients with higher acuity needs. Your philanthropy and your support has never been more important. And we wanna thank you for taking the time to visit with us today. Even if it is a little bit of a unilateral conversation, we certainly hope the next time we can be in person. So thank you, thank you for your commitment to Ridgeview and our community and helping Ridgeview be the best that we can be.